Sandy Moon Rowe is here to once again address Toyota's anti-EV strategy, but this time he takes a very interesting and unexpected stance. So let's get going right now. Welcome to E4 Electric. If this is your first time here, that's okay. All you have to do is click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon. That way you won't miss Sandy's almost weekly appearances on this channel, plus our Sunday electric car news. As you know, Toyota, headed by its CEO, Ikeo Toyota, have been very vocal about why they did not want to make electric cars all this time, including some false advertising and flat out lobbying our government to slow down the electric adoption. We are only a few months away from the start of production of Toyota's very first real EV, which will most likely sell out in no time and Toyota has recently announced that they are already testing a solid-state battery technology in one of their concept vehicles. So, why such a sudden change? Well, let's see if Sandy Monroe believes it was sudden to him, but before that, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by Driven. Finally, there is a company that's taking the training of Tesla drivers seriously. If you're shopping for a Tesla or currently own one, sign up for a private Driven course and let a certified advisor meet with you and provide a personal experience. You will discover features and driving methods you never knew existed. Sign up today using the link in the description of this video. We've talked about Toyota many times because it's such a, an evolving topic, right? I mean, a year ago, we talked about how they are anti-EV, how they are lying about it and war, right? Lobbying about it. You know, but a little by little, all of a sudden, they're working on solid state, you know, battery, all of a sudden, they're working on a car. Now we're only, what, two, three months away from them actually producing their uh, all-electric SUV here. Uh, you know, nothing amazing, but it's going to sell really well because it's Toyota. Um, and now I'm thinking about, um, you know, were they, were they kind of tricking us all along? Were they basically right uh, in terms of for their business model to kind of uh, abstain from electric vehicles until things have gotten really clear for them there is market so there is you know cheap you know suppliers and everything do you think that maybe after all they actually for themselves not for the cause had a not a very bad strategy at all so um toyota um i i i know a lot about toyota i spent um i was there in the early 80s 83 or something like that and that was my first exposure to Toyota management, executive management. And I will tell you that once I listened to what they had to say, in, including Ichi Toyota, I met him in 1983. And I will tell you, nothing, absolutely nothing I saw in the U.S. could compare to the guy that I talked to and asked about the spot welds in the, um, in, in the wheel wells. And he came back and said, oh, there's 72 spot welds or whatever it was. How in the hell did he know that? I already counted them. I already knew what they were. It was the right answer. How did he know that? How does a chief executive officer for Toyota know how many spot welds are in the wheel well that I, that I was looking at? How does that happen? That happens from real leadership. By the way, another thing that I, I we didn't get a chance to see it because of uh, an arrogant idiot that was in the, uh, in the group but he said, Toyota has a 100-year plan, and he was going to show it to us. But an American said, a 100-year plan? Are you nuts? In 100 years, you'll be dead. Your grandchildren will be dead in 100 years. What the heck are you talking about? Why would anybody care about that? So E.G. turned around, said something, and uh, the guy with the big book disappeared. And then he said something else in Japanese. And his, um, his um, people that were standing in back of him, hi, 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 hi. And what he said, I, I went to my interpreter and said, what did he say? Oh, he's not happy. I said, that's not the answer. What did he say exactly? Oh, it's, it's embarrassing. Tell me, I want to know. And she said, he said, where there's arrogance, 
there's opportunity. So the Toyota people themselves are not uh, checker players. They're chess players. And when they want to screw around with your head, they're going to tell you what they want to hear, what you want to hear as a, as a receiver. And what they're doing in the background can be totally, totally different. Totally different. People forget the Prius was really the most successful of all the different hybrids that have ever come out. That's the only one that really and truly was successful. Tearing their product to pieces in the, uh, like, 15 years ago or something like that. I mean, they obviously knew what they were doing and they came up with a really good product. A product that, uh, that you know, was, was well received in the marketplace. What were they doing in the background? It's hard to say because when I was fooling around with Toyota, they were making campers. They, they had a design for campers. They were looking at kitchen appliances. They're a bank. People don't know that, but Toyota's a bank a big bank at that, and all kinds of other things that are totally diverse. And then who makes the most vertically integrated products uh, before Tesla? Well, that would be Toyota. How do they get around that? How do they make it work? Oh, Karatsu, Karatsu, little, little companies that, uh, okay, you're a really good uh, uh, vice president. I want to award you. I'm going to give you this division of Toyota. Take this over. Karatsu is a really good idea. Never work in the U.S., but it's a really good idea in Japan. Telling the truth. Um, hi. Does that mean yes? Hi. Does that mean yes, or does that mean I heard you? Or does that mean, yeah, right. All kinds of things can come from that one word, and you can't tell the difference. Toyota speaks a totally different uh, psychological language than what we do here in the U.S. Hell, yes, hell, yeah, that kind of stuff. Um, that kind of stuff, we know exactly where we stand. With hi, which is supposed to mean yes, you don't know. You have no clue what that meant. Hi, hi, sometimes can mean yes, I understand you, and yes, I agree with you. But hi doesn't mean that. Telling a lie or or misinformation, well, that's part of business. That's just the way it works. When people came along and said Toyota is focusing their attentions only on, uh, on uh, fuel cells and whatnot, people forget. With a fuel cell, you need a battery. You have to have it. You can't, you can't run your car on a fuel cell. It has a battery. The fuel cell generates electricity. The electricity goes into battery, and the battery will power the, the wheels. Okay, so it makes logical sense that if they've developed the best fuel cell that I ever saw, I'm not an advocate for fuel cells in cars, but if they developed the best fuel cell I ever saw, then does it not be complimentary or wasn't it not complimentary that, to develop a battery pack that could be the best in the world? Toyota spends a tremendous amount of money on R&D and so it doesn't surprise me that they surprise the marketplace. It doesn't surprise me that they tell lies because it's not really lies. Telling your enemy uh, a falsehood is part of the culture. That's the way it works. I mean, you don't give away your strategy. You, uh, you try and confuse the enemy and that's kind of how they do things. But then I'm also thinking, you know, Honda, I've always kind of thought Toyota and Honda are the same sort of uh, on the same page, you know, they're both Japanese companies. I think they have both, uh, you know, similar um, triumphs, but also similar challenges. You know, Honda is nowhere near, at least again, from what I'm seeing, nowhere near where uh, Toyota is. As a matter of fact, you know, Honda CEO just said that they weren't going to go with uh, hydrogen fuel cells when they researched it like 10 years ago. Uh, why, why Honda is um, on such a kind of a different page than Toyota? Or do you think they're just hiding something that uh, they haven't unleashed yet. Okay, so you said they're both Japanese and that's the truth. That means that they will, and by the way, being Japanese isn't just a, a national thing, it's a religion. J Japanese means you're in the religion, not just a, a citizen of Japan. The culture is a religion. So here's the deal. Um, 
when Honda says things uh, about Toyota, uh, they're, they usually take the opposite approach. They still have that, um, we're gonna develop whatever we're gonna develop in secret, and we're not telling anybody what we're doing, but, uh, but we are going to, uh, we, are, we are going to continue on what we think is the proper strategy. And Honda basically said, no, we're not going there. We're not going in that direction. But that didn't mean that they weren't still looking at it. And on top of that, they didn't mean for a second that they were going to abandon ship on batteries. Honda is going to surprise the daylights just like Toyota is because that is the Japanese way. That's the Japanese way. You have, you have cards that you don't show. It's just, I mean, they're the best poker players on the planet. So, yeah, I, so I totally hear you. But at the same time, it's also, as you're saying this, I'm wondering, like, why did Toyota go with the all-electric RAV4, uh, you know, based on Tesla's technology? Why did Honda recently released Honda E, which I think is one of the worst electric cars ever? Like, were those just kind of, uh, let's test the market? Or they just tried and failed, and then, you know, now they're trying again. Like, what's, what's up with those two odd failed products? Well, the other thing that you need to know is that <clears throat> Toyota and Honda are vicious adversaries. Vicious. And in a lot of cases, the, where there's arrogance, there's opportunity. Um, Honda and Toyota have been arrogant to each other. And, um, and they will go in the opposite direction just for spite. So I believe that Honda took a bad track. And that would be because they, um, they see Toyota as the greatest enemy to their success. Uh, that's the best I can tell you. And by the way, you'll, you'll notice that on our website, we did not tear apart um, a Honda EV. Uh, there's no reason. Right. Uh, just like no reason to buy one, I think, most of the time. Well, all right. So, yeah. uh, but, so you're saying that, okay, you know, Toyota is still number two in terms of, you know, value, second most valued company. Nowhere close. Today. Today, yes. Nowhere close to, to Tesla. But, you know, do you think, um, you know, as we, me, we, me and you talked about who, you know, who's number two, who is the challenger, right? And it changes, I, you know, I feel like. And um, do you feel like Toyota might actually have a comeback where they will, you know, challenge once again uh, Tesla for the number one spot of the most valued no. company. No, no, no there's too much. Uh, there's too much distance between where Toyota is and where Tesla is. The the there's a vast difference in 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 order to make things happen, you have to have money and uh, or you, at least you have to have value. And when you look at Tesla's value versus Toyota's value, I mean, it pales in comparison. Nobody, VW, nobody, none of the German companies, nobody has the value that, that Tesla has. The borrowing power is what you need in order to dominate the marketplace. And so Tesla at one time, yeah, they could dominate. They, they, they ruled the roost. Now they don't. Um, are they going to come in second? You I'm meant not 100% Toyota. sure. You meant Toyota, right? Toyota, Toyota. What, what did, did I, I say? Tesla. Uh, Tesla's number one forever or for a long time anyway, but Toyota, Toyota is, is just gonna have a problem. They, they, don't have, they don't have the buying power, they don't have the lending power that they used to have. And that is how you create new product. You're always borrowing more money to figure out how you're gonna do what you're gonna do next. And, um, but I will tell you that, I can't remember the exact numbers, but I know that in North America, I'm predicting that the Chinese will take over 30% of the market share. Uh, Tesla will have about 25%. And then I'm looking at uh, Ford and Toyota as, uh, as having about an equal share in the North American market. And then there's others. I don't even wanna talk about them because quite frankly, they've made so many stupid mistakes that I can't, uh, I can't figure that out. I can't, it's hard to, uh, values you can you can measure intelligence, but stupid is boundless. I mean, and uh, there's been a lot of stupid mistakes that uh, that the other car companies have made, and I don't think they're I don't think it's possible for them to recover. So um, so I, I believe that Tesla is going to be 
out there and and uh, and still being a competitor. Well, only time will tell. But meanwhile, don't forget to subscribe to Sandy's channel. I put a link to it in the description of this video. All right, looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged. Take it